Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called a subsequence. It's an easy, we're going to jump right into it. Given two strings S and T return true if S is a subsequence of T or false otherwise. A subsequence of a string is a new string that is formed from the original string by deleting some can be none of the characters without disturbing the relative positions of the remaining characters. For example, A, C, E is a subsequence of A, B, C, D, E while AEC is not. So we want to see if the letters in S are in T in the same relative positions. So example one, we have A, B, C in S and A, H, B, G, D, C in T. Here we're going to output true because A is in T. And after that, we do find a B. And after this B, we do find a C. So S is a subsequence of T. And example two, we have AXC with the same T as before. So we find an X, we don't find an X at all. So we output false. It doesn't matter if the C is there or not. Okay, so this problem is pretty straightforward. To go over exactly what it's asking, what we want to look for is all the letters in S in the same position in our input T. So we're going to do the same thing we did while going through these examples. And to make it a little bit clearer, let's look at example one again. Okay, so we have example one over here. We have S being A, B, C and T being A, H, B, G, D, C. We want to check if S is a subsequence of T. So we want to find all of S's letters in T in that same relative order. Say we start in the beginning, right, at index zero. The first thing we want to look for in T is an A. Now we do find an A in T. So what do we want to look for next? The next thing we want to look for, and I'm just going to mark the index we are on what we're looking for. The next thing we want to look for is a B. So if I just saw an A in my T, I'm going to look for a B now. And I'm going to skip all the letters that aren't a B up until I find a B. If I never find it, if I go through all of T without finding the letter I'm looking for, that means we went through all of T without actually going through all the letters in S, which means we actually never found S to be in T and we would return false. If we do find it, so in this case, we do find a B over here. Well, now I want to look for another letter in S up until I finish S. So again, I go through all of T looking for it and I do find it. Well, now we're also done with S, so we would return true. So we're going to have two pointers starting at the beginning of both S and T. And as we find letters in T that match S, we're going to increment our S pointer. If not, we're just going to keep going through T looking for our pointers. If we go through all of S at the end, that means we know we've found all the letters and we would return true. Now we're going to go ahead and code this up and then run through an example to see exactly how this is working line by line. Okay, to code this up, I'm going to start off with two pointers. So it's going to be pointer S and pointer T, both of which are going to be initialized to zero. So if I had example one again over here right now, pointer S is at zero and pointer T is also at zero. So now I want to loop through while our pointers haven't hit the end. So while pointer S less than length of S and pointer T less than length of T, I want to check if the letters I am on are equal. So if S of pointer S equals T of pointer T, if the two values in both S and T at my pointers are equal, I would increment S by one. So I'm going to increment my pointer S by one to now look for this next letter. And either way, whether or not I find the letter in T, I want to increment it up as well. So pointer T plus equals one. And this is because if we have found a letter, we now want to look for our next letter in the next letters in T. If we haven't found it, we want to skip through anyway until we do. So now once we've gone out of this while loop, either T has hit the end or S has hit the end, we just want to see where pointer S is. If it's done with all the letters in S, that means we have found everything we needed to and we would return true because S would be a subsequence of T. So we're going to return the following conditional statement. We're going to return if pointer S is greater than or equal to length of S. So I'm going to go ahead and run this code. Here 
It's accepted and now we can go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted as well. Now, before leaving, let's run through a super quick example just to see and make sure we know exactly what's happening line by line. So we're going to use example two over here where S is AXC and T is AHBGDC. And these two are going to be our input strings. We want to check if S is a subsequence of T. So we're going to initialize both our pointers to be zero, which means S and T are right over here. While pointer s is less than length of s, that is true, that's 3, and pointer t is less than length of t, it's true, that is 6. If the two values at these indices are equal, we're going to increment pointer s by 1. Both are a, so now s is going to be 1, and we can move this up here. And we're going to move t up as well, so t is now up here as well. So now they both point to x and h respectively. We're back in this while loop, these conditions are still being met. So now we make the check again. X and H aren't equal, so we don't do anything to S, but we do increment T to be 2. So now it's B. We're back in this while loop, make another check. X and B are not equal, so we go ahead and increment this. And now T is here. Back into the while loop. X and G are not equal. Increment. So now we are at D. X and D are not equal. So again, back in this while loop, increment this to be 5. And now we're over here. X and C aren't equal, and we increment this again. So now it's at 6. Now once we go back into this while loop, the pointer of T, which is 6, is not less than length of T, which is 6. It had to be 5 to be less than it. So we exit the while loop, and we return whether or not S is greater than or equal to its length. So pointer s is 1, and we never actually went past the length. The length is 3, and we never equaled that, so we would return false, and that is correct, because we never found axc in t, and that's exactly what we are expecting to output. Talking about space and time complexity, for time, if s has m elements and t has n, our time complexity is going to be o of n plus m, because we'd potentially be going through both s and t entirely. And for space, we only have these two pointers we are keeping track of. So that is going to be constant O of 1 for space. If you have any questions at all, as always, let me know down below. Drop a comment. If you found this helpful, like, share, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.